Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Aiden Kosick and today we are going to be talking about the Hummingbird Project. Just think of it as David walking onto the floor of the stock exchange, taking out the biggest slingshot ever and bringing Goliath down to his knees. We're David. Yeah. Yeah, we're David. So The Hummingbird Project is a film that stars Jesse Eisenberg, Alexander Skarsgård, and Salma Hayek, and it's about it's all about high frequency trading and the amount of time that it takes to get information from point A to point B. And these two guys who are trying to shorten that amount of time by a couple of milliseconds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in the film translates to millions of dollars. Right off the bat, I have to give Alexander Skarsgård his props in this movie. He is great in this movie. It's definitely one of the best roles that I've seen him in personally. He really packs a punch. He's a great character in this movie. The one thing that walking out of this movie, everybody's going to be talking about. I know in my press screening, everybody was talking about it. I know it's a little too early to say this in the year, but come awards time towards the end of the year, I would definitely put his name up in that, you know, in those talks of best supporting actor. And the other man that I do want to touch on a little bit, Jesse Eisenberg. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Jesse Eisenberg. I think that he kind of, he can talk faster than you can process. And she brought this movie, The Double, which was actually an English movie. We filmed that here. Richard Ayoade uh, directed that. He was from the IT crowd. Maybe he's been to one of these events. Um, Jesse, he's... say that again, but slower. <laughs> he does that a little bit in this movie, but he does a great job kind of humanizing his character, which I find to be a you know one of his problems that he has in a couple other roles that I've seen him in. Selma Hayek, you know, she's fine in the movie. Personally, I think she was miscast. I think that there's a couple scenes where she's trying to come off intimidating, and it just feels like that little chihuahua that just barks and yaps at you a little bit, and you can just kind of shove it away. And I feel really bad having looked this up off of my phone because I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but someone else who I really want to give their props for in this movie was Michael Mando. Keep that name in your mind because I know that after now, after this point on, I'm going to keep it in mind. He will be a household name one day. But overall, the stakes of this movie are pretty high. And one of the problems that I have against the movie is the way that it translates that to you, the dialogue that they use. I don't know how many of you guys out there have seen The Big Short, but one of my problems that I had with The Big Short was a lot of the lingo and a lot of the technical terms that they use in the movie kind of goes right over your head. It does that in this movie as well. It is a little hard to follow why they're doing this, you know, who they're doing this for, until about the midway point. Another kind of knock that I have against this movie is that it's a very, you know, I said this in my Five Feet Apart review, but it's a cookie cutter film. You kind of know where the beats are going in this movie. It, you know, it's nothing new. It's nothing that I haven't seen before. It's not an innovative story by any means, but I enjoyed it. It was overall a good time. I think that the acting in this movie is really up to par. A little bit more on the technical side. The directing was, you know, it was fine. It, it does have a style to it. A lot of films made with this kind of budget don't really have their own look and they don't have their own style. There are some really, you know, great shots in this movie. The cinematography wasn't, it's nothing amazing. I honestly thought that the cinematography in Captive State was a lot better, but just a couple of the shots of the horses and people playing baseball and the trees and the forest and the snow and the way that it all just fluttered. Some of the shots in this movie are really just beautiful. This is one of those movies that I kind of went into completely blind. I hadn't seen any trailers. I didn't know what the cast was. Only saw one promo image, and I saw a pretty low Rotten Tomatoes score, which personally I don't think it deserves. And so I really didn't know what I was going to get. And one of the little surprises that I did see in the movie was there's a good amount of humor in this movie. It, it made me laugh a little bit. Overall, I had fun with this movie. It was a good little thriller, something that kind of I needed. March is the new summer, so from the moment Captain Marvel hit, we're just going to be bang, 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 bang with all these big, huge blockbusters. I thought it was a pretty good just, I'm going to wind back, sit down, and enjoy the ride kind of film and see where this story is going to take me. Overall, I would probably have to give the movie a 7.5 out of 10. I personally don't think that it's something that you need to go see in the theaters, but once this movie hits rentals or iTunes rentals or whatever, Netflix, Hulu, wherever you can check it out, I would highly recommend checking it out. 
All right, guys, so that's the review. Be sure to subscribe, click the like button, comment below. What, do you th what did you think about the movie? Do you want to go see it? Are you going to go see it? Did you already see it? Click my social media links in the description below. And thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.